I would like to ask if you could tell us a bit about uh, the 10 pictures of the ox herding. Yeah, that's possible. Which one do you like? All of them. Oh, good. <laughs> Fantastic. The 10 ox herding picture is actually not a linear sequence. It looks like a linear sequence, but it's actually cyclical. So it starts with the 10th. Somebody is teaching in the marketplace. Usually they say that's the last one. I'd like to begin with that as the first one. So someone has to teach in the marketplace, number 10, so that a person, a youngster, a beginner, would start to look for the footprints of the ox, first picture. And then you can see the footprints of your karma. You can see your effect on the world and other people. Next, you see the butt of the ox. The back, the big, brown, back of it. In earlier questions, in Hungarian, I answered this because when you see your karma, you see really the flip side. It's not beautiful. It's not nice. And sometimes for months or years, you actually experience a lot of subconscious content, the suppressed part of your personality, someone you don't want to be yet you are, and you don't even know about it. And the next phase is trying to tame the ox. So you have rope, that's your practice. And you wrap that around the neck of your karma. And then your personality tries to pull you up to the mountain or down to the ravine. That's when you see that it's very tight, almost snaps. The next one is when you tie the rope to a tree, and that tree is not moving. That's your first experience of unmoving mind. Boom. And then you get a little rest because you practice regularly. Your karma is not pulling you up and down so much. That tree for you is the tree going beyond life and death. And when you practice regularly long enough, then you can actually ride the ox without being tied to any tree. Yet the rope is around the neck and you can play the flute and that flute controls the ox. That means you can hear even the most subtle, intuitive little sparks in your mind. You listen, you perceive, you follow. There's no need for rough treatment anymore because you got trained. And then it develops to the extent that you can sit on the ground and the ox is around, no more rope. It disappeared. Everything became practice because you went through the previous phases before. And the next thing both the rider and the ox and nature just disappear, all of them. And what remains is signified by a circle. And next thing, you just see nature. No more ox, no more rider, you just see nature. Sky is blue, trees are green. So with the circle, you attain this point fully. Not just a glimpse, the real thing, 100%. And then, from this substantial experience, you perceive truth. And that's when you see nature as it is. And then comes correct function. Then you are the master teaching in the marketplace. And the cycle begins again. Originally, there were six ox herding pictures in Taoism. And in Buddhism, four more were added. And in some cases, you see 11 not 10. Whatever it is, it signifies the most important stages of your practice. So if you practice really hard enough and you see what's going on inside, the ox herding pictures have very clear meaning and they're very simple, very practical, not theoretical, least of all historical and not symbolic, direct. So if you practice, you really understand what's going on with you, your karma, nature, whatever you're going through, okay?